I'm Dr. Pat McHugh, the Director of the Equine Reproduction Lab at Colorado State University. I'd like to welcome you to our facility to talk about aspects of the pregnant mare, care of the newborn foal, and evaluation of the placenta. We're going to start with some, some concepts about, about prediction of foaling and getting the mare ready to foal. Ideally, we would like to know what the foaling date is and the ideal situation is to, is to have an accurate breeding date. Many times we don't know that if a mare has been pasture bred, we don't know exactly what the, uh, what the breeding date was or the projected foaling date is, but well, we can make an estimate of that. Uh, calculation of a foaling date is usually based on, on a, a gestation length of approximately 340 days. The most convenient way to to calculate the due date from a, a last breeding date is, is to subtract 25 days from the last breeding date and that would be the calendar day the next year when that mare is expected to foal. We would like to have the mare move to the site of foaling about two to four weeks prior to foaling if possible. That gives the mare enough time to get used to her environment, settle in, and, and probably most importantly, to start to develop antibodies against some of the, the local bacteria, uh, potential uh, pathogens in that environment. And as she develops those antibodies, they will, at the time of foaling, be transferred to her colostrum, and then the foal will gain immunity to those pathogens through mom's colostrum. We would also like to have the mare vaccinated about four to six weeks prior to the expected foaling date. And one should talk to your regular veterinarian about what vaccines to use, but most commonly, it would be the equivalent of a four-way vaccine. That would be Eastern and Western sleeping sickness, tetanus, and influenza, plus West Nile virus. There may be other vaccines that are recommended for your, for your own geographic area or for specific pathogens that are common in your area. But for the most part, at least a four-way plus West Nile would be recommended. If a mare has had a caslic at the time of breeding in order to help her get pregnant or stay pregnant, that caslic needs to be opened up about what's recommended is about 7 to 14 days prior to ex her expected due date. If the mare looks like she's going to foal early, that caslic should be opened early. If a mare is allowed to foal with the caslic in place, there's a potential for uh, uh, pretty severe consequences with, with injuries uh, during the time. It, it could lead to a difficult birth or injuries uh, to the mare at the uh, time of foaling. So one needs to pay close attention if a mare has a caslic in place to open that up early prior to foaling. In order to fine tune the time of foaling, many, many horse owners will use milk calcium testing in order to predict uh, rather specifically when the mare should foal. Calcium levels in the mare's milk rise in the last five to seven days prior to foaling. And we can use that rise in milk calcium to predict within a day or two period of, of when that mare is about to foal. Often a mare will wax up prior to foaling and the waxing is no more than some colostrum that's leaked out through her mammary glands, leaked out through the teat end and on exposure to air solidified and it looks like a candle wax secretion. About 90% of mares will wax up and a general rule of thumb is if a mare does wax up, they usually foal within 24 to 48 hours after waxing up. It's, a, it's probably the single best sign that a mare is getting close to foaling. But unfortunately, not every mare waxes up. And about 10% of mares will foal without waxing. So if an owner is waiting for a mare to wax up, and, and that's the only sign they look for, they may come out the next morning and, and have an unexpected surprise waiting for them. There are a, a number of behavioral changes that a mare will, will show prior to foaling. If they're foaling outside, they may try to isolate themselves from other horses in the, same, in the same area. They may show other signs of being uncomfortable the evening before. They may drip milk, they may run milk, all signs that labor is, is imminent. There are also labor alert devices that can be placed on the mare, either halter based or girth strap based or, or devices, alarms that are placed on the vulva of the mare to alert an owner that a mare is in active labor. And finally, uh, some of the technology that's really helped horse owners over the last decade is, is video monitors of, uh, of, of the foaling stall or the foaling site. It's common now for many farms to have video cameras set to, to uh, watch the foaling stall so that an owner can observe from, from the home. 
now with iPods and other other devices, handheld devices, you can even have uh, have the folding stall visible as as you move around and um, and do your daily work. Possibly, in, in in my opinion, the 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 best advantage of a labor alert device. Most of us are ready for a mare that gives birth in the evening or at night. That's when when the vast majority of mares fold out between 10 p.m. And, and 2 in the morning. When a mare folds out during the day, we may not be quite so ready for that because we're expecting them to fold out at night. If a video camera is placed monitoring that stall or a labor alert device is in use, that can help to, to tell an owner who's busy doing other things during the day that that mare has started into labor where they may not be watching the folding stall that closely uh, during the daytime.